Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the NCBI webinar today. Uh, this is Peter Cooper. This is a short webinar. Um, we may not have time to address questions at the end, but if you think of any questions, please type them in the questions pod. Um, we will answer them in a document that we'll post on our webinars and courses page uh, after the webinar. Um, and there's a link, a compressed URL link to the directory on our FTP site that has these slides, as well as the other materials that are, I'm going to be talking about today, some of the command lines I'm going to be showing you. Uh, also, the recording will be in there once we process it as well. So today we're going to talk, talk about downloading genome data. In particular, I'm talking about sequences uh, and the corresponding annotation files uh, from the NCBI FTP site. And my uh, email address is there on this slide. So if you have any questions about the contents of this webinar, feel free to write to me. We'll talk more about contacting us again at the end of the webinar. So today I'm just going to talk about these topics um, quickly with some slides, and then we'll go over to the command line and show you some. We'll use both the web pages and the command line to download some uh, genome sequences. So we'll talk about assembly, which is our main web presence uh, and our main way of organizing the uh, genome sequence data. Uh, I'll talk about the what I'm going to call the new genomes FTP site, but the new organization has been there for a couple of years, but a lot of people still don't know about this. And then we'll go over some recommendations for downloading assemblies, show you how to do that. Uh, and I'll mention uh, the Genomes Announce email list has been restarted recently that will be a good way for you to find out about things that are changing about our genome site. And like I said, we'll do some quick demos with some of the tools for downloading things. So just a, a terminology thing. Today when I'm talking about genome sequences, I'm going to be calling them assemblies. And those are the things that we're going to be downloading. Those are the sequences that are sort of models of a genome. The genome itself is sort of an abstract concept in a way. It's an idealized concept. That's the thing that exists in an individual person or organism. But what we're going to be downloading today are assemblies of genomes or representations of genomes. And that's why the resource we're going to be using is called assembly. Um, this is what the web resource looks like. Um, this is one of our entree databases, we call them. Um, and it's the way basically of finding out about what sequences are available uh, genome sequences for particular organisms, uh, and even metagenomes are in here now. So it tells you about the assembly structure. We now have accession numbers for assemblies, GCA for GenBank assemblies, and GCF for our RefSeq assemblies. This is the way you're going to be able to track the relationship between GenBank and RefSeq, and it's the basis for the organization of the FTP site, which we're going to be talking about extensively. Notice that I've circled on this page here, this picture of the page really, the link to the genomes, Genome Downloads FAQ. A lot of what I'm going to be telling you today is based on that FAQ, and it's worth a read. I didn't write it. Paul Kitts wrote it, but it's very useful and really gets you started on how to do these kinds of things at NCBI. So if we look at a, a page, this is the one for the human assembly. The assembly name here is GRC H38 Patch 8. Um, you can download either the RefSeq version or the submitted GenBank version of the assembly by following these links here. I'm not going to go over the contents of the assembly pages in this webinar because we're going to be mainly talking about the FTP site and how to get the data out of there. So if you go to our FTP site, um, and the base URL here is the ftp.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov, and I'll show you that in just a minute again. There are two, there are three main directories there. There's a genomes all directory, and that's where we're going to be pointing a lot of our um, URL paths today. Um, you can't browse this currently. If you tried to open this up in your web browser, your web browser would fall over because there are more than 45,000 directories in there. I'll talk in a minute about the fact that we're going to restructure that um, soon to make it easier to deal with. Of course, if you're targeting specific files and directories in here and you have the past, then there's no problem to do this, but you don't want to open it in your web browser or browse it in any way. The two directories that are browsable are the genomes GenBank and the genomes RefSeq directory. They support browsing, and they support downloading for high-level taxonomic groups, or you can drill your way down to the species level if you want to, and we'll do a little bit of that today. If you go into the FTP directories here, the genomes GenBank directory is on the left, the genomes RefSeq directory is on the right. Um, you can see the organization by um, taxonomic group, groups of organisms really, not necessarily taxonomic groups. And within those, there are these assembly, assembly summary text files, and these are the files where you would go to get the paths to download data. And we'll, you can certainly see examples of that on that genomes download FAC. Today, I'm going to show you how to get them using eDirect, which does basically the same thing. 
Uh, in fact, in the assembly summary file, what you'll find in there, the most useful thing, really one of the most useful things, is this column 20 in that tab delimited file, which is your FTP path. And we can also get that, as I said, using eDirect. If you look at the directories for particular assemblies, um, you'll see them like this. On the left is a, a prokaryotic assembly. That's for the Staph aureus um, reference genome. And the one on the right is for the uh, human reference genome. You can see there are lots of different kinds of files in there. There are sequence files. There are annotation files, which include things like the GFF3 file. I'm not going to go over what all these files are today. Um, that's really not the point of this particular discussion. But the file descriptions are um, included in that uh, FTP FAQ that I pointed you to a few minutes ago. Take a look at that. There's also a readme on the FTP site that describes what the contents of these files are like. I also wanted to mention to you that I, I mentioned this in passing a minute ago. We're going to be um, very soon changing the way the structure of the genomes all directory looks. Now, in principle, the things that I'm showing you today will not be affected by this change at all because basically what you're going to be doing is getting the paths to these directories and they will just simply change, but you'll still be getting the paths. So it doesn't really matter. But just to show you what's going to happen is we're going to make these sort of hierarchical directories now so you can browse them. And so the directory structure is going to be based on the assembly accession number. And so every three digits will represent another level in that directory tree. Um, to make it possible to browse it. But as I said, it's not going to affect the workflows that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, you can still browse the genomes GenBank directory or the genomes RefSeq directory. Um, and you can use assembly summary text files and eDirect, as I'll show you today, to get the new URLs. Notice that the directories are named by the accession.version of the assembly and the assembly name, and that won't change either. So how are you going to get data out of this FTP site? Um, for a few assemblies, a small number, you can use Entree, and we'll do that in a minute, to find and access the right directory on the FTP site. For batches, you can use eDirect or assembly the assembly summary text files to get past to the directories and the files you want. Um, you can even download directories from the GenBank genomes or the uh, I mean, genomes GenBank or genomes RefSeq directories on the FTP site, and we'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to be showing you a couple of command line programs, um, which are pretty good ways of doing this on a Unix system. Uh, and you can use wget on Windows as well. Um, one way to get things down is to use the NCBI rsync server, which is probably one of the fastest ways of doing this. Uh, I'll demonstrate that today. You could also use wget with these FTP paths or curl, if you want to, uh, to download the files or directory. If you have to download a large number of files, you can even write a simple script that calls rsync or wget to do this. Um, there is a sample Perl script that's in the materials directory for this particular talk, and you can see that um, if you go to that directory on the FTP site. And the code for that Perl script is included on a file I'm going to show you in just a minute. So let's go ahead and go to the command line, and we'll do a few things before we have to wrap this up. So we're going to work with getting fungal assemblies. We'll show you how to use rsync to download data, and we'll show you how to use wget to download directories and files. So I'm going to go out of this, and I'm going to pull up a command prompt. So you should be seeing a command prompt here on one of the servers at NCBI. And what I'm going to do is on our FTP site, there's a list of commands that we're going to be going through as basically the demo here. And one of the first things I want to do is just to use uh, the assembly resource to get a particular path to a genome. This is an Entree query. You could uh, write this yourself, or you could get it by using the filter options on um, the assembly resource. So I'm going to go into another tab over here, go to the NCBI homepage, go to assembly. So I have some filters on. I'm going to turn them off. This is the assembly homepage. And this, by the way, at the bottom there is that link to that FAQ, which will be very important if you want to try to do these kinds of things. I'm going to go ahead and paste this Andre query in. And 
And so I've got six of the complete fungal genomes here. You can see them here. What I want to do is quickly get you to the path to download one of these genomes. This is the one we're going to download. This is the Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the yeast um, reference genome, in fact. And if I click here, that takes me to the assembly record. There are lots of things here that we don't have really time to talk about today. Notice we can see the assembly accession number here for the RefSeq. It also references the GenBank assembly here. We can go straight into the RefSeq assembly page here to download this. This is going to take us to the FTP site. And you can see the URL here, which is the one that goes into Genomes All, but goes to a, the specific directory for the assembly accession, and then the underscore character and the name of the assembly. So with an FTP client or even with a web browser, you can download files individually if you want to. But let me quickly show you that you can do this very easily using rsync. And I'm going to show you some command lines here in the next couple of minutes. I'm not going to explain everything that's on them. If you want to know what all those options are, you can look at the man pages for the different programs, the man page for rsync, and the man page for wget when we get there to that one. So let's just do an rsync command to download all of this data that's in there. That's going to be the sequence files, the annotation files, plus the disk directory here, which contains more files, which are chromosome by chromosome. Uh, and information about how the assembly was put together. So I'm going to go back to my script here. And this is the rsync command we're going to do to get that down. I pulled the trigger pretty fast on that one, so let me go back up here because I wanted to just mention a couple of things. So this is the basic command, and these things have to do with whether we're going to keep turn um, symbolic links into files and things like that. Recursive means we're going to go continue down the directory tree structure to get things. And this is essentially the URL for the FTP site replaced, the protocol is replaced with rsync here, and that's what you do to get these, and then I just told it to put this in a directory called yeast, and then it tells me the information from the server, and it downloaded all of that stuff, including the directory structure, to my hard drive here. And there's the yeast directory there, and there are all the files that were present on the FTP site. So while we're here, let me just show you something else. Um, another kind of download that we might want to do. So we're in Genomes All, but what if we wanted to get um, the, all of the fungi reference sequences? So what I can do is change this Genomes All directory here. I'm going to do this by hand. So now I'm looking here at this directory here, which is, contains all the different organism groups here. So I could download, for example, suppose I wanted to download all the complete fungal genomes here, or all of them, in fact, if I wanted to. So I could write an rsync command to do that real, real easily. This is the one I want to use, and I'll discuss this one a little bit. So what this one's going to do is it's going to go through here and avoid a lot of the directories that are in there. And basically, it's going to get rid of the assembly structure directory. It's going to get rid of the latest assembly versions. And it's going to get me the protein FASTA file from each one of these. So this is a rather long, complex rsync command line. But you can look at all these options yourself and see what they do. So let's try to run this one. This is a rather complicated one. What it's going to do for us is it's going to give us all of the protein files. So this one will take about 15 seconds to run. Let's see what happens. And so notice that what's happening is it's reproducing the directory structured tree that's present at NCBI. So this is basically mirroring the data, but it's getting a specific file from each one of these directories. So we're just going to get the protein files 
from each one of these um, fungal genomes. So we can see they're all there. Um, if we wanted to, we could go into the Saccharomyces directory. So we have the reference genome. That directory is retained from the NCBI side. Also this one, which is the assembly accession. And you could do some things to make sure that, to make it so you didn't get all of these directories if you didn't want them. And there's a protein file. So those are it's a FASTA file of all the proteins that are annotated on that particular genome. Okay, now there's some other examples in here using RSync, and you can take a look at them. I want to move on to the next way of doing things, which is to try to use WGET. You could also use RSync to do the kinds of things I'm going to do next. But this is the basically the strategy of trying to get the FTP paths, either from the assembly summary.txt file or to get them from eDirect. So I'm going to use eDirect to do that. We have a webinar on eDirect if you need more information about eDirect. But I'm going to use that to get the paths. So this is my eDirect command. And basically, it's going to use the same query that we used um, in the um, assembly resource. Then I'm going to use eFetch to get the document summary. And within the document summary, there is a section that has the FTP um, file pass in it. So I basically can get out the RefSeq um, FTP directories out of that. So let's try that and see how that works. So the only thing that I've added to this is there's a little sed command at the end that will add that front slash, the directory symbol, at the end of these to make them directories, which will make them work a little bit better with wget. And so that file contains URLs that would take me directly to those directories, uh, and I could potentially download those exactly the same way I did before. I could use a a different way to do that if I want to. And the way that I was going to show you was to use wget. So what this will do is get me the same kind of information that I got for the yeast, but for all of those complete genomes. This is a taller order, maybe not, than the one we did a minute ago. And the different options here are ways of dealing with the uh, kinds of default directories that wget will put on your machine. Uh, you can organize those in different ways by choosing how many directories to cut and so on and so forth. Again, I refer you to the wget man page for this information. And I'm going to put it into a directory called complete fungal. So I now have directories for all of the different complete, the six complete fungal genomes that we uh, saw a minute ago using um, the assembly resource. And so, for example, I went into the yeast directory here. And what I did, one of the switches that I added to that one, I think, let me see here. So I, I didn't get the uh, semi-redundant, the assembly structure directory was not in that command line, so I didn't get that. If I wanted to, I could have done that by changing the level. I have a level 1 here, which means I won't descend, but I could have descended into the next level to, got, to get these. Um, the last example, which I won't do today, goes ahead and gets a particular file out of each one of these directories, and you can do that with wget. You can also do that with the Perl script that's included uh, in the directory for the materials of this particular um, talk that are on the FTP site. And so all that stuff, including those additional examples, are in that text file that's on the FTP site. So um, before I conclude, let me just go ahead and throw up another slide which has some information about staying uh, current. And also just to remind you of something I said earlier, um, the, the mailman list or the uh, email list for genomes announced has been revived. It has was kind of dead for a while, but it's now going to 
provide you with information about changes to the genomes area of the FTP site. For example, uh, the kind of change I was talking about with the genomes all directory. The genomes download FAC uh, document is there. And again, when I have these uh, sort of abbreviations, those are the abbreviations like NCBI and angle brackets. That just means the NCBI homepage URL goes there. Uh, likewise, when it's an FTP in angle brackets, that just means the URL for the NCBI FTP site uh, goes there. I also wanted to remind you that we have an NCBI help manual that's listed there, and that has good instructions on how to use eDirect. There are a bunch of very useful fact sheets, and there's one specific to downloading this genomic data, which gives you the same kinds of information we talked about today. Um, write to the help desk with any general questions, or you can write to me, and my email address is was given to you at the beginning. It's pretty easy. It's just my name, Peter Cooper at NIH.gov. If you have questions about the webinars, the structure of them, or you know, when are we going to do a webinar on this, that, or the other, um, when are the files going to be ready, those kinds of things, send that to webinars. So I'll go ahead and conclude there, um, and I think we can hang around for about five minutes or so if there's any questions that are general. Okay, so there there don't seem to be any. Um, if you have questions. You can write them in the questions pod. We'll make a document that has any questions that came in during the talk that Wayne answered and put that up on the FTP site. Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you all for coming, uh, and we'll talk to you next time.